Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Paris Kaufman, I'm the author of the Magi Trilogy, and today I'm going to be reading some of my best and worst reviews of my Magi Trilogy. Now I want to start this video with a discussion of why I read my reviews. I think oftentimes authors read them as a source of feedback in some way, because sometimes reviews will mention like the person really liked most of the book but they could have felt there was an improvement on some sort of character development or some other bit of feedback that they can take and implement into their future books. You know, you can take the negatives in the reviews and turn them into positives in the future. And that is partly why I read my reviews. But I mean, for me personally, I just want to hear what people are saying about my books. I want to hear the good, I want to hear the bad, I want to hear the ugly. So that's really why I read my reviews is I'm out here for the tea. I'm like, oh, so what did you guys really think? But part of it is it could definitely help you improve. And then it also can be a source of encouragement, like if people are enjoying the books or if they're not enjoying the books, you're like, okay, where where is where is there something falling short? I'm going through on Goodreads now and I like too that oftentimes like even if you have a positive review, even if you have a five star review, there's something in there that you can take and implement in the future. Or it's again, like I said, you can take the negatives and turn them into positives. I've gotten a few reviews on the Magi. Um, I don't know who posted them, so we'll see if we see them today. But they were good reviews, but they still put some like minor critiques in there. Like, for example, some people thought that Miles was a bit overpowered, too confident, too just like non-defeatable like he was just indestructible force and they also didn't like like he was just like he knew the answer to everything in the magi so as the series goes on you find out miles kind of goes through a bit of like a decline so i did take the feedback and i implemented it so even if it's a positive review you can um definitely take it for i guess just advice and experience Let's start with the Magi's first ever review. It's actually a review I received about a month before it came out. So this is from one of my beta readers. And I've always, I mean, it's like my first ever review that I ever got. So it's always exciting. But then there's also that layer of, I got a five-star review on the beta red version. And um, maybe I'll make a video about this sometime. I, the version I sent my beta readers for the Magi was not, not a version that the beta reader should have gotten. I should have gone through a few more rounds of rewriting before I sent it to them. They, I sent them a 40,000 word version and I published a 60,000 word version. It was like a completely different book. So she still liked it. Um, this is from Larissa Galt. She is the author of Breaking Free. So I am going to just read her review. So it says, you guys, this book has everything you're looking for in a clean YA fantasy. Kaufman's characters are easily understood and so, so, so likable. You'll fall in love with all of them 10 times over before the book is done. The pacing of the Magi is one of my favorite parts. As someone who writes fast paced action and despises long chapters, this book is easily at the top of my recommendation list. The Magi's world building astounds me. From the different types of Magi and what their powers can do, the strengths and weaknesses of each of them, to the animal species that play an important role to the story, you can tell Kaufman has poured her entire soul into the creation of this universe. I often have at least one complaint, even with a five-star rating, but I can honestly say that Kaufman and the Magi lived up to every expectation. That means a lot to me. This is like one of the sweetest reviews I've ever gotten. And again, like I said, she read a, ooh, ooh, she read a not so good version. But let's look at some of the reviews that have some critiques and let's see how I implemented the critiques, if I can share, because some of them, I can't share it because of spoilers. I'll just be like, yeah. I took that advice. This next review is a four star review that was posted on Christmas Eve of 2022 from Mike Diener. And he is the author of Daughter of Axiom as well as The Flame Gifter and two children's picture books as well. I believe the titles are Here's the Deal, Moose Aren't Real, and Sammy's Song. I'm actually not 100% Sammy's Song is the correct title, but look up his books. They're all really good, really amazing. And this is a really sweet review as well. It's also another long one. So I'm going to kind of summarize it. So he starts the review with like a little bit of a summary, which I appreciate in a review because it's not just like opinionated, but it's also like a brief little flashback or not flashback, but like what he picked up from the book but then also if anybody is skimming through reviews and is like oh what did he say they can see like a little bit of a synopsis that is in a different version than what I say the book is about so it helps with marketing so I definitely appreciate that um he talks about rose magic um let me see okay here's another a lot of like um this is another review that mentions that he liked the world building he likes the enemies of the story he likes the magic system etc then so the biggest negative of the book is that the beginning feels slow. 
That said, it's not a long book, so that wasn't a huge problem. He's not the only person who's ever said that, actually. So that is something I'm working on going forward with the- I did this with the rest of the trilogy, and then also with ROTM, is it's not a quest story, but then they're also going on quests, so there is a lot of, like, walking. They're, like, going from one place to the other, you know? They're going kind of from point A to point B, and it takes them a couple weeks to do so. So there's a lot of, like, slowness. So I'm working on making my books more action-packed, even if it's in a slower scene. So, for example, in ROTM, they're walking, you know, from point A to point B, but I gave them a bunch of rather inconvenient stops along the way. And all of these inconvenient stops for them were actually convenient story builders for me. So, plot convenience, everyone. We support it. Okay, this next review is from Daphne Page. Now, I don't know all of her titles offhand. I think she has three or four books out now. I know for sure she has a standalone titled Jess, and that book looks really good. It's actually, I'm hoping to buy it at some point this summer. I am in a big spend month now because I am publishing Unbound very soon, so I've spent like $500 this month already, so I'm trying to keep it low on other spending but I will hopefully be getting Jess soon. So her review is really sweet and she says she likes um or she starts the review with Paris Kaufman's The Magi as a tale of family hope and magic. So I appreciate that because I really I was I, I was hoping people would get that vibe. I was hoping they would like that. Um, she likes that the homeless of it, the smooth writing, the close-knit family, which in my opinion we don't see enough of in fantasies and the commu completely unique take on magic. Having found family, having protective siblings was really important to me, so you will see that spread throughout my books. So if that's something you like, you will see it. Now this one is, um, it has, um, so she, talks, she likes the eye colors match their power, she's eagerly awaiting the rest of the books, and this is a piece of feedback that I definitely did implement. So it says, there were some spots where it sounded a bit repetitive and there were a lot of info dumps from Miles, but it really didn't take the magic away from this book. So, again, I really appreciate that type of feedback. It is something I've worked on implementing on. Part of it is Miles' personality is he's a huge reader, so he just knows facts about everything. So he just genuinely does know about everything, but it's the way he goes about sharing it is a bit of an info dump. So I worked on An Illusion of Fear and Belle Destine going into ROTM. Less of info dumps and more so him, like kind of piecing together what it is, but then also working with others to piece it together. And then there's other reviews I've gotten that are similar to this where Miles is a bit like, he just he just knows everything. Um, and it's like, yeah, he does. It's kind of his personality, but then also I feel like I can display it in a better way. So that is another example of how I work on implementing my reviews. And then also why I like to read my reviews, because it gives me encouragement, like people are enjoying my books, or if they're not, it tells me why they're not enjoying my books. And then it also gives me some advice and feedback, because like some of these reviews, like they're really positive reviews, and they weave in this like, not critique necessarily, but this additional piece of advice in some ways and it's really helpful to make the book better. One of my summer goals is to hit 50 written reviews of the Magi on both Amazon and Goodreads. So if I hit this goal by the Magi's second birthday, which is August 26th, I am going to be entering everyone who left a review into a giveaway to win any book in the world of the Magi they want, you know, at the time of the giveaway, which means the Magi, Illusion of Fear, Baldestein, and Unbound will be out at that point as well. So if you're interested in an opportunity to win one of my books, a signed copy of one of my books, definitely leave a review on both Amazon and Goodreads so that we can hit 50 on both of them. For now, thank you for watching this video, and whatever time it is, whether it's morning, evening, or night, have a great day.